And so I want us to analyze the false hopes that Paul illustrated here and to seriously examine how similar false hopes may arise in us today. These can be helpful not only in assessing our own salvation, but also in our parenting, in our evangelism, in our prayer lives, in our relationships, and everything. False hopes not only skew our trust for eternal life, but also can tempt us to discontent and discouragement and misdirection in all of life. Much can be discerned by considering where we place our hopes. I mean, the world, the flesh, and the devil can even take good things, blessings from God, and turn them into idols or distractions in our hearts. And that's why we need to return to these warnings that he's giving in this context. They're really warnings about wrong rejoicing. And so we're going to look at nine false hopes from verses 4 to 7 for us to flee now and forever. And I pray that God will awaken us to how these nine false hopes may appear in our hearts today. And if you wonder whether I can get through nine points in one sermon... I have done that before, but I'm not today. So we'll get through three of these and we'll pick up the rest of them next week. Christ Jesus is what believers talk loudly about, share gladly about. It's what we gush over. And that final phrase of verse 3 then contrasts that, that we put no confidence in the flesh. None. No hope, no trust, no ultimate rejoicing in the flesh. And the flesh is is our humanness apart from God, not merely the physical bodily flesh, but the inner immaterial person. And so that leads us into verse 4, and the first false hope to be warned of, to flee from. Point number one, flee the false hope of personal sufficiency. Warning number one, flee the false hope of personal personal sufficiency. And by personal sufficiency, I mean any hope you have in yourself personally, any trust of what you can bring to God, of what you can accomplish in the flesh on your own. The warning comes from that statement at the end of verse 3 that true believers put no confidence in the flesh, but but more so it comes as we understand what Paul's doing as he turns into verse 4 and then what follows. So read verse 4 again. And so, if you wanted to count your reasons for being better than anyone else, Paul's totals would have had more potential. If you want to make salvation a resume contest to compete for reasons for self-trust, Paul says, I far more. But he says that only to trash it as useless. And so he was showing, secondly, the false hope of comparative supremacy, you might say, and that's a second warning today. Flee the false hope of comparative supremacy. Paul was showing the folly of competing with others, of of comparing yourself with others to feel better about yourself. For anyone that might trust in their circumcision, verse 5 says, well, Paul, he will circumcise the eighth day. Literally, he was an eighth dayer regarding circumcision, meaning his his parents got it right. They followed the ceremony down to the detail exactly in Scripture. Paul was better if you want to talk about circumcision. A lot of these people, they had come around later in life. They were Gentile proselytes, many of these. And so they had been an eighth dayer. Paul was. And so he puts that forward as a false hope to warn us, you might say, against the false hope of religious ceremony. Warning number three, take some time to think about, flee the false hope of religious ceremony. And listen, anything that you hold onto before God that makes you think that He owes you a blessing somehow, that He must listen to you, that somehow forces Him 
It's a false hope. Unless it's Christ alone. If you say to yourself, but I did this, but I did that, but I, but I, but I. And so God, why this? Or God, why don't you that? Anything you hold that is not empty hands clinging to Christ alone is a false hope. Flee the false hope of religious ceremony and forsake it all to have Christ alone. What would you look to? What did you subtly rest in or look to your past faith, past prayers, past ministry, past resume? Examine your approach to the God who welcomes only those who come in only Christ.